Imagine, if you will, that you are stepping into a small, unassuming machine. The door closes with a quiet, reassuring click. The ambient lights of the room slowly fade to a gentle darkness. Before you, a single brightly illuminated button beckons. You press it. A digital clock on the console begins to blink, its numbers spinning backward at an incredible speed. This machine is our vessel, a time machine of the mind. We are not traveling to see ancient empires. We are not traveling to see prehistoric creatures. Instead, our destination is the very birth of an idea, the first flickering thoughts that allowed humans to communicate with machines. We will travel to meet the pioneers, the brilliant minds who first conceived of giving instructions to these complex contraptions of wires and circuits. Our expedition has a clear and simple purpose. Our journey begins in an era of giants. We find ourselves in the 1940s. Computers were colossal machines that filled entire rooms. These behemoths were marvels of engineering. ENIAC, Mark the Frun, covered in thousands of vacuum tubes, countless relays, and a labyrinth of wires. They had no screens as we know them, nor keyboards for typing commands. Operators used a painstaking process, flipping switches, plugging and unplugging cables. The very first language was the machine itself, machine code a language of pure numbers. Ones and zeros controlled electricity and circuits. Writing machine code required extreme precision and patience. Programmers had to know the computer's intricate architecture, each sequence mapped to basic operations, adding numbers, moving data between memory locations, or halting the program. They wrote long lines of numbers, checked them carefully, then entered them by punch card or paper tape. It was slow, arduous, an error prone. A single misplaced one or zero could make the whole program fail, yet it let humans instruct an electronic brain to perform complex calculations. In the 1950s, people looked for a better way. That led to assembly language. The next stop brings us to the late 1950s, a period of explosive innovation. Complex scientific problems pushed assembly to its limits. At IBM, John Backus led a team to create a new language. They wanted scientists to express problems more naturally. In 1957, they unveiled Fortran. Formula translation. Programmers could write math that looked like algebra on paper. A compiler translated high-level lines into many lines of machine code. This freed programmers from hardware details to focus on the problem. It reduced coding time and cut down errors, opening computing to non-specialists. In 1958, MIT professor John McCarthy introduced LISP, list processing, built for artificial intelligence, symbols, logic, ideas. Its core was the list, a simple but powerful way to represent almost anything. Lisp introduced a radical idea, code as data. Programs could read and modify themselves, homoeconicity. Programmers could extend the language. The syntax looked odd to many. Yet Lisp's ideas about symbolic computation and metaprogramming influenced countless languages for decades. As our time machine glides into the 1960s, a new philosophy emerges. Programs grew complex and hard to maintain. Clarity and structure were needed. Algol, developed by an international committee of American and European scientists, set the tone. Designed as a universal way to describe algorithms, it introduced influential concepts, block structure, with begin and end, later echoed by curly braces. Grouping statements into logical sections made programs more readable. It championed lexical scoping for disciplined variable access. While Fortran won commercially, Algol became the academic standard. Its ideas became the roots of a vast family of languages. Our journey continues into the 1970s. At Bell Labs, Ken Thompson and Dennis Ritchie were building Unix. They needed efficiency for low-level control and expressiveness for tools. Their solution was C, a masterful blend of abstraction and power. From Algol's structure, C added direct memory access and machine-level operations. Powerful, versatile, readable, with fine-grained performance control. C was small, fast, and portable. Unix was rewritten in C, enabling portability and fueling adoption. C's curly braces, semicolons, and type declarations set a standard. It became the foundation for many of the most important languages to come. Um, yeah.
Section 5, A New Paradigm, Object-Oriented Programming with Smalltalk and Java. As systems grew massive, managing interactions became a major challenge. The big idea, not a long sequence of procedures, but a collection of self-contained objects. Um, you know. Smalltalk at Xerox Park, led by Alan Kay, took objects to the logical extreme. In Smalltalk, everything was an object. Numbers, text, even windows. Encapsulation bundled data with methods, protecting state and taming complexity. You interact by sending messages, objects respond with their own methods, intuitive and real world. Smalltalk's graphical environment and pure OO design shaped future interfaces and styles. As the 1990s began, OOP went mainstream. Java rose quickly, created its son, led by James Gosling, with write once, run anywhere. Java compiled to bytecode, running anywhere a JVM existed, perfect for the web. Embracing OO like Smalltalk and C++, but simpler and safer, with automatic memory management. Portability and safety made Java a staple for enterprise applications and early web applets, cementing its dominance. Our time machine accelerates into the mid-90s defined by the explosive growth of the web. Early sites were static, text and images, with no real interactivity. A language inside the browser was needed to bring pages to life. In 1995, Brendan Eich created a new language in just 10 days. For such called first called LiveScript, soon renamed JavaScript. Despite the name, it was very different from Java. A lightweight scripting language for validating forms, creating animations, and responding to clicks. Short. Running in the browser, it manipulated the DOM to update pages without reloads, enabling interactivity, small and forgiving, designed for web designers and amateurs to do simple tasks quickly. The role of JavaScript expanded as web apps grew complex, fast engines like Chrome's V8 made it incredibly quick, frameworks and libraries enabled sophisticated single-page applications, Node.js took JS to servers, one language for front-end and back-end, Full stack JS surged in popularity, powering websites, mobile, desktop, and more. Near the present, languages diverge to meet different needs. One path favors simplicity, cleanliness, and productivity. Python, created by Guido Van Rossum, gained immense popularity. Its core principle is readability. Clear steps, white space over braces. Shorter, clearer code appeals to beginners and pros alike. Vast libraries power web development, automation, data science, and machine learning. Ruby by Yukihiro Mats Matsumoto, optimized for programmer happiness. A trend, make programming more accessible and productive. We have spoken of languages, but behind each idea are people. Ada Lovelace, working with Charles Babbage, conceived software algorithms, the first programmer. Turing's abstract machine defined what computers could compute. Builders like Bacchus and McCarthy shaped high-level programming. Pragmatists forged C and Unix, transforming computing. From C++ to Java to Python to JavaScript, thousands contribute, the story is profoundly human. Our time machine gently slows, its humming fading. The display shows today's date, 2025-12-17. The door slides open, we step back into the present. From room-sized machines fed with punch cards to powerful computers in our pockets. From raw machine code to expressive syntax, each step raised abstraction and broadened access. Each language answered its era's challenges, building on what came before. Ahead lie quantum computing, AI, biotechnology. More declarative, secure, provable languages. The story isn't finished. Perhaps this journey will inspire you to write the next chapter.